Hey, if you're watching the last area video, I do apologize. I was cut off slightly at the end there. I didn't get to round it, but it's fine. I'm sure you, I'm sure you've managed. So, a uh, new topic: compound interest. This would genuinely be in your calculator paper. So, P two, P two, P two, P two. There you go. So, don't worry. You have to do this in your head or anything. Uh, so, yeah, let's get cracking. So, as before, pause the video, read the question, and then you know check to see if my work is matched to my sure. So, a soft drinks company. Okay, so let's just get the relevant information here. Decrease, increase for two years, and they want to know the three-year sales. So this is the equation you should remember for compound. It's your amount multiplied by so one plus or minus the percentage over 100 to the power of n. Now this is the handy way of remembering what your decimal multiplier is. Some people may be quite comfortable with that, that's fine, but this will always work all the time. So you don't have to stress about turning this into a decimal. So if I want to take my amount, I've got 240,000. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to decrease that by 4.2%. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to times that by one, take away 4.2. And that's just for one year, so it's just a little one up there. And now we're going to increase by 5.3 for the next two. So the increase by 5.3 is 1 plus 5.3 over 100 to the power 2. And I like this question because that's sort of trickier. You, you know, a lot of the time it can just be one sum. But this one's made you do this sum twice. So I'm going to write that. You don't have to do this, but you can just go straight to your calculator. But just to show you what that is. If I was to get my decimal multiplier here, I'm going to have 0. Well, that'd be nine five eight. Yeah, nine five eight in there. That's reducing by four point two. And you see why this suddenly become quite helpful. It just saves you having to think up these annoying numbers. Uh, times and that's a bit easier. That's one point zero five three to the power of two. So that is a nice way of getting your decimal multipliers. Some people, you know, would just jump straight in there. I think things like this, it can be quite easy just to make a little silly mistake. So I, I'd, I'd like to write it out like that. And try that on your calculator, see how you get on. Okay, so I have got 254.937.36528. And again, I think at this point, do just write what's on your calculator. Okay, then round off. Don't round off now. So now it wants three significant figures. Okay, so three significant figures. That's one, two, and three. I drew my little line. Singing this to myself since first year. Well, yes, since first year. Uh, find your place. So that's my third significant figure. You look next door. If that's five or greater, I'm going to add one more. So I'm absolutely going to add one more. So that number is five or greater. So that becomes 255. And after this line, zero, zero, zero. What I don't do is carry on like this because I don't need these zeros after the decimal. For place value, you, that would be wrong. You just need these zeros here for place value. So there's two things to remember there. Cut off your number and round it. Don't put the zeros after the decimal. So mark for that. Okay, next one. Again, pause, have we read, and then we'll see if the work is the same. So which option has got the greatest value? So we're just going to compare option one, option two. You should be thinking again compound interest the minute you see a time and a price that's when there's a time and interest rate that's when you're thinking ah, yes this is your per annum that's your um you know that that's your you know compound okay so time and an interest so for the first one the amount and i do suggest you study you write these out just to kind of get it into your head you know kind of what we call rote learning but it does it does help just you know get that reflex so 3,000, and that one is 1 plus, plus is increasing, 200, and that's going to be for 3 years. So we try that on your calculator. So 3230, so that's with the compound interest. Fantastic. And you know, compound interest, you know, the reason we're doing this is because we're getting interest on the interest. That's different from this. From this calculation here, we've got a three-year investment. We get eighty pounds for every thousand pounds invested. So for that one, it looks like they're making 
simple interest calc. So if we've got £1,000, and that's giving us £80 of interest. Coming from Yeah. Well, if I've got £3,000, that's going to be the same as times that by 3, so it'll be 240. So £240 from a 3000 And I'm going to get that every year for three years. So I know I'm going to get that. That's for three years, sorry. So your £1,000 for your investment. I was going to say, well, then I have to times that by three again. I thought it was for every year. Sorry. For every three years. So your £1,000, £80, that's for three years. But we've got 3000 so it's 240 So at the end, you're going to end up with your original amount, your £3,000 and 240 So those are your two options. So the best one is going to be this stocks and shares, ISA. So it's just at the end, you would be safe uh, with the best value. So stocks and shares, best, I would say, you know, 3240 is greater than 320.6 and something like that. Make sure you answer the question is the point in that. But yeah, so you've got your compound because you've got, you know, every year you're getting two and a half percent interest and that will that interest will get interest. And this one's just a very straightforward you will get eighty pounds uh, for every thousand for every thousand pounds. Next one. Again, have a little read. So it's very similar to our first question. I would be taking out useful information, increased 7% to, decreased 4% for the last year. It's almost exactly the same as that first question. You do find these are um, a settling questions you get at the start of your paper, just to warm you up. And as you can see, you need it. You know, I've, I make a few little mistakes when I just start doing these. Then by the you know fifth video, I'm like, well, I'm, in, I'm in the groove now. So yeah, your amount is 920. And our amount of, first of all, we've got one that's increasing by 7%. That's fine. Two years. And then we're decreasing it. So it's one taking away four over 100. This one. And it's just one year in. So try that on your calculator. So that is going to give me. What have I got? 1011. I'll just uh, keep writing this down. Like I said. Whole thing. Because I'm then going to round it off to three significant figures. One, two, three. Find your place, look next door. Five or greater, add one more. It is not five or greater, so that stays the same. And then I get a zero in there. If there's any place values, that one becomes zero. I don't do anything after the decimal because I do not need that. Doesn't have place value. So if you put point zero zero zero, that would be wrong. And that's your final answer. So very similar to our first question. We'll just zoom out. Okay, see that's almost identical to that one. I think the mistake here is really just how you put it in your calculator. That's why I quite like this equation, because that's exactly how you put it in your calculator. 1 plus 7 divided by 100. Don't forget you're multiplying these. That's not an add, that's a multiply. And don't forget your power. It's very easy to type it all in, and then you get the strategy on to the next one. Good stuff. I think I've got time to just do this last. I'll do this last one, then I think that should be it. All the questions are very similar. Have a read. So yeah, very similar to before. It's the amount times one plus or minus the percentage over a hundred to the power of m, which is our time. So we've got a car, one thousand four hundred, thrifty jack, and it's decreased in value as cars do, except recently because of a chip shortage from Taiwan. But usually, yep, they will decrease, and that's three years ago. So. He bought it and it decreased 13% each year for three years. So what is the value of the car? Try that in your calculator. There we go. And I've just rounded that off to significant figures. After the two, I get a zero. The next question, we'll go over percentages in more detail, but that one is a, is a difference over original. Uh, so if you're looking at doing part B, you're saying difference over original. That's all about your profit. So just uh, I'll put that in for you. So the difference is difference in what he sold it for versus what it was. So the difference there is 450. The original amount was this times by 100. So it's a 32.1% percentage loss. So if you're doing percentages, we'll do a full video on them, but difference over original. So I hope that helps. The big takeaway for me was get this equation written down and watch for it in two parts. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.